in the last episode of Hermitcraft, the new mega game, Demise, started broadly across the server, and as a result, we are no longer allowed to, until we die, I suppose, wear god armor. And that made me construct this uh, rather interesting attire, which gives me two armor points. And I decided that I would be wearing a mob head instead of a helmet. And the last episode, I was known as Batman. But I thought I'd make it a little bit more interesting as we progress through the Demise game after reading your guys' comments saying that we should wear a different mob head every episode. So I thought it would be funny if we place down a dispenser and fill this with a bunch of different hermit's heads and then randomly draw whoever we become this episode. All right. Oh, hey, how's it going, everybody? This is Etho, and we are back, guys, in another episode here on Hermitcraft. Get your snacks. <laughs> oh, that's funny. So I guess today we are going to be Etho. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Hermitcraft. I am starting things off today at the island because today I really want to get a system or some sort of trading unit going where I can get as much bolo enchanting as I possibly could get. And the reason I need so many bolo enchanting, in case you missed the last episode, is to fuel Sahara fuel. Fuelception. And we get these bolo enchanting through trading with clerics. So we're gonna need a bunch of clerics and then we're gonna need a building, a brand new building, where we can have it so that we can trade as much as possible. And it's certainly been a while since I built any new buildings in the island, like, I, I, it must have been a month or so since we constructed this. And, yeah, that's that's not entirely finished yet, I, I, will, ad I will admit that definitely needs, needs a little bit of a shell over it. But I think this general area over here will probably serve as a good place for our bolo enchanting hall. I've played this game for over 10 years and I still really love to just dig. <laughs> just dig out dirt or insta mine stone. It's just a, it's a great feeling, isn't it? It's a great feeling. Not to mention clearing mushrooms. Oh, this is a great feeling. I have a little bit of an extended plan for bolo enchanting, I should say, if I can get a, a very, very, very efficient sort of trading hall for them. I think we can do more things with them than just use them at Sahara Fuel. So I'm actually very, very excited about this. So with the land dug out, we have to figure out the layout of the building. And the most important thing in this scenario is to make sure that we can trade constantly with a bunch of villagers and that they will constantly during daytime restock their trades. And so I'm thinking we're going to do a 2 by 5 and have 10 villagers. So... This will be where they would be standing. And if we want to, we can always add more uh, in another pocket as long as we make sure that their pathfinding is not colliding with the first with the first with the first cell. That sounds super confusing, but hopefully it will make sense in a little bit. It's been so long since I built anything in my base that I kind of have to remind myself about the block palette, but we're going with Grey concrete a lot and cyan terracotta, that's sort of our base, background colors, and then the sandstone and the stripped birch logs. Oh, I suppose I've switched over to oak logs quite a bit, haven't I? Yeah, it's oak logs everywhere these days. It's actually not a single building that is wearing birch except for this Xbox building and the rocket factory. Before we can fully think about the design of this building though, I'm going to... Build a chamber that will be holding the villagers. So we're going to go with sea lanterns. I think they will shine through these brewing stands. But that's going to be their workstations. And then on top of that, we're going to have carpets, which I find a bit tricky to place on brewing stands. Well, this is actually working out pretty well. Oh, I like the fact that there's a little bit of smoke coming out there. That's really cool. I decided to bring this up one level. I think that's going to look a little bit better from the outside. So this is going to be where the villagers are going to be standing. And then we want a wall on the back. And the trick to get the villagers to stay in place is to use the hitbox size of 2.0. So a villager, again, is two blocks tall. It's exactly as tall as two blocks and because of that as you can see that little pixel there with the carpet makes it so that if they're in here 
they're not gonna be able to move out. And this is also the most efficient way, it's so weird that I'm Etho, by the way, but this is also the most efficient way I've found for them to constantly restock. So placing the workstation underneath the carpet works absolutely great. So now all I gotta do, and it's a pretty big task, is I have to get 10 clerics and then I have to bring them all the way over there. And of course, I want every single cleric to be infested by Rodriguez. I think this guy is ready. So you're ready to go to the prison. Now, when doing the Sahara bulk trading for quartz, I found that one of the tricky things is to keep them separated. Duh, obviously, because they're not separated. They're all in one little spot. But I thought I'd make an attempt at knowing which villager I've most recently traded with to allow them to restock. So I built this little... Yeah, this little homebrew of contraption here. And what this is, is basically just a head selector. So I have some random heads in here. I'm going to push this button and that should... It didn't work. It, it didn't work. <laughs> right, let's try this again. This should, as I said, select the random head. Yeah, there we go. And then send them off. And then I'll connect this up to the thing there but before I do I thought we'd uh, we'd also give them custom names and this is clearly a fanson yeah clearly a fanson okay with a little bit more headaches of pushing villagers around on an activated rail Mr. Fanson is now in place one two three four five six seven eight nine okay I'm gonna leave it at nine Moving these villagers has been an absolute hassle, and I had to rebuild this rail a little bit because they kept getting into the minecarts again, and I had to re-send them back. It, it, it's, it's always a hassle when you do villagers. Did I count that correct? Yes, I did. Nine villagers. With this done, we should, in theory, have a really good bolo enchanting trading going on with all of these dudes. Uh, now, I should probably work a little bit on getting this building to a little bit of a better state than just... Uh, the display case looks like a display case at the moment. <laughs> they do look funny though. Specifically C double O. <laughs> Cleric double O, get it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now this is the next day in real life because my illness is just not going anywhere and I completely lost my voice after the last recording segment. But in the meantime, I have traded quite a few bolo enchanting and i've also added a shulker loader right here so in theory when this shulker box gets full it should be broken and put into this chest which makes it easy for me to transport it around now the problem is is that i've used every single emerald that i own and i still don't have any emerald income in on my island and that's really something that I want to get to but for now I think the best way to get emeralds before I have any infrastructure is probably to visit Exuma's shop he sells them pretty cheaply and hopefully he still has stock I am taking bigger risks this episode though than I did in the previous episode with flying and stuff and that may be stupid it may be dumb but I, so far, so good. One stack of blocks for three diamonds. Yeah, this is a really good price. Okay, he has... He's got a little bit of stock. Well, he's got quite a bit of stock. This is a lot of emeralds, though. This is a lot of emeralds. I'm happy with that. Just to demonstrate just how powerful it is to trade when you have villagers like this, it's absolutely crazy. Absolutely crazy. You can get a lot of stuff very 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 quickly so i've done enough trading to fill one shulker box let's see if this works e yep and yes okay sweet so now that makes it very easy for me to transport these i think i'm gonna leave it at that and head over to sahara fuel it's actually taken me quite a while even though this is very very efficient of trading it's taken me quite a while to get one full shulker box I'm so bad at math, but I think that a full a full one of these costs me 27 diamonds and I'm making about 46 diamonds back because we sell them at one or 40 bottles per diamond. I, I'm, I'm terrible at math, but it, it sounds good. It sounds like we're doing a little bit of profit or, or we're, we're at least doubling. Well, we're not doubling. We're not actually doubling. Yeah, we're not, we're not making that much diamonds, but we're making diamonds. We're making a profit. Now, that is, of course, while we still buy emeralds from Exuma. Like I said, I do really want to get my own emerald farmer machine at the Island of Doom. And I got a plan for 
for one that actually won't really cost, cost us anything. Anyway, I need to head back to Hermitville and I need to stock Sahara Fuel. So I made my way over to Sahara Fuel and I gotta say, I really like how this thing turned out. I did make one mistake though in the last episode and that is Golden Carrots. We do not want to be doing Golden Carrots at Sahara Fuel. And the reason is obvious, we don't want to compete with our own branch Sahara Eats, which is just just over the <laughs> just over the hill here. The original plan was to use Ender Pearls, so I also went uh, and I collected a lot of the Ender Pearls that I collected earlier this season when I made Sahara's Enderman farm, and we will finally be able to use these for something. Now, one problem is. Uh, that this thing shoots out two stacks uh, by the default configuration. So we have to change the Bolo enchanting to be two dispensers rather than eight hoppers. And then I'm going to do something similar for the ender pearls. And I think we'll probably just use two droppers, which should give 40 ender pearls. And with this, I've reconfigured the ender pearl one. I've reconfigured the Bolo enchanting one. I realized if I would have thought about this from the beginning, I wouldn't have had to make it this deep. Even though it looks really cool, I'm only using two droppers here and two dispensers here, which means that I could have made it a lot smaller. But this should fi be filling up with Bolo enchantings, and the Ender Pearl should be filling up, and the rocket should be filling up. So I want to test this out. I want to test this out. So we're going to go Bolo enchanting, and then I guess we'll just do something like that and press the button. We should be getting XP. Hopefully. Um takes a while yeah but there it comes okay that is working beautifully oh nice this is so very satisfying oh and there was a hopper in the system bonus hopper oh that gave me 16 or 18 that's almost perfect let's do that again my math is terribly wrong terribly wrong let's throw these out and yeah we get 18 ender pearls not bad that's actually quite perfect I made it back to the island. Luckily, safe and sound. I am very worried every time I travel during this demise game. But I've been spending the past half hour or so trading for more Bolo enchanting. And, yep, yeah, as you can see, I filled another full Shulky box and then some. I mean, trading with villagers like this. If you haven't tried it out in your own Minecraft world or in your own realm or whatever, this is just fantastic to get resources. You can do this with a lot of things. Quartz and stone and... I really hope that they don't nerf this. I really do, because I think it's such a cool game feature, cool game mechanic. In fact, I'm gonna take a stance. In the past, villagers were actually quite useless unless you wanted enchanted books. The only real thing that villagers gave you that was realistically valuable was enchanted books. But now, after the update, there's a lot of things. There's quartz, there's stone, there's diorite in case you're crazy there's bolo enchanted yeah I, I like i could even make redstone and lapis very 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 efficiently through trading with villagers anyway got i got a little bit carried away there and I, i'm not gonna lie i know that this has been patched in 115 in the snapshots that are out and it makes me a little bit sad it makes me a little bit sad but uh the reason i'm trading for more bolo enchantings is because i have a little bit of a plan that's going to require these a little bit of a fun thing that we can do now that this demise game is up and running. And I actually think that one and a half Shulky Box is probably going to be enough. So I'm going to be pleased with those two Shulky Boxes. Now my idea for these Bolo enchantings that I've crafted up is pretty simple. I want to see if we can make what I'm going to call a positive trap in people's bases. So I've made my way over to Stress Monster's magnificent magnificent ice castle where she's constructing something rather massive over there and i'm gonna plonk down essentially a button now we all know that some hermits loves buttons more than others so this will be an interesting little experiment i just have to find a place where the hermits won't miss it and i have space to put some redstone in i guess i want it to be very visible so maybe i'm just gonna plonk it down here right on her big balcony thing now, I have no idea how I'm going to design this, but one thing I want to find out is whether or not an experience orb will pass through a carpet in a dispenser. I am not sure about that one. Right, let's give this a test. Oh, I see. Oh, that's 
<laughs> That's really cool! That is really cool, so the bolo enchanting doesn't actually break until they hit a block. Right, so that works! That looks... <laughs> that looks pretty good! Right, it's very bare bone, but... That works. And then I have to fill this guy with bolo enchanting as well. I don't actually know how many it uses, so we got 64 in. And with this button press, it used five. That's perfect. That's perfect. I'm trying to make this look a little bit weird, and I'm trying to make it look like this could be something bad. And I don't know about you guys, but this just looks like... It looks a little bit like a TARDIS at the moment. Which may not necessarily be a bad thing. To make it look more scary, I brought some of these wither heads that I've got from killing the wither several times. So I think we place those down there. Do you fear the unknown? I think that's pretty good. I think that message is pretty scary. And hopefully this thing confuses the hermits quite a bit. And I'll be interested to see who's actually going to push the button and realize that it's just a mending machine in your base. It's actually a very nice trap. Now in the long run, the idea is to make the people who actually press the button addicted to mending using these bolo enchanting. And then we may add that as a Sahara service where we can come and install a mending machine in people's bases. So it's like a long-term marketing campaign utilizing fear and the minigame demise. I mean, this, yeah, it's gonna be so fun to see how the Hermits react. I'm gonna go ahead and build this in some other Hermit spaces as well. Potentially the most obvious button Hermit is definitely gonna get one of these. <laughs> obvious, obvious button Hermit. <laughs> I really love green space, I just don't understand this. How can the man get anything done in this? mess of just i mean it is so weird it is so weird anyway i'm just gonna plunk this down in his base in the very center and that should be good if you want to build one of these it is actually super simple and i thought i'd show you real quick how to make one all you need is two dispensers facing upwards and then a observer facing into this block here that will be powering both of those dispensers and then all you need to do is just add a switchable observer clock by having a piston there and then another observer like that, so that when that piston gets powered, it pushes that observer in, and this starts the observer clock, and then that shoots the dispensers out. And that is, that's pretty much it, or that is it. Yeah, it's it's super simple, <laughs> super simple. I just realized something. This whole positive trap project is going to be very valuable information for me in knowing what hermit would walk up to a random machine and press a button. Because you can make a trap that instantly kills someone with a button press using TNT minecarts and some funny mechanics. I'm excited about doing that now. But uh, yeah, no, we gotta, we gotta stay on, on target. We're not dead yet, and hopefully we don't die anytime soon. Now, I happen to know that my good friend, Good Times with Scar, is easily scared. And so I think this would be specifically funny to see how he reacts to. However, I flew around inside his base, and it is unbelievably beautiful. <laughs> unbelievably beautiful. But I have no idea where to put this. I'm just going to put it here on the pier, and hopefully this is going to be visible for him. And that is three traps down. I'm building these things rather quickly. Now, unfortunately, I'm running out of resources to build these, so the last one to build is going to be Fall Symmetry, which has an absolutely amazing base as well. And I'm kind of curious to see what you guys think in the comments. Who do you think, if any, has the guts to press the button? And personally, I think that Grian is going to be one who presses the button. I don't know about the others though. And it's going to be very interesting to find out because it also reveals easier targets for the demise game should we die and start trapping people. I just had a very big realization. 
What I've done here today is essentially preparing for the scenario of my own death in Demise in the game. Because if someone gets super addicted to using these vending machines, which, you know, I, I wouldn't blame anyone for being because they are very, very handy. <laughs> but if someone gets super addicted and I die, I could simply walk up to the machine and change out the contents of the dispenser to be TNT, or to open the floor, or to do something that, that will kill them. I, I Have I just made a pre... a, a pre-trap? Is this about part of a bigger plan for potentially dying in the Demise game? I think we can all agree that, I, I mean, I'm not, I'm not that smart. This was a lucky coincidence, but it is a coincidence nevertheless that I sort of like. But with that, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for today. I hope that you have enjoyed the video. If you did, hit the like button down below. My illness is still ongoing. My video uh, schedule is therefore still, unfortunately, a bit on the slow side. I do apologize for that. I am, um, it's, it sucks being ill. It really, really stinks. But anyway, like I said, I hope you've enjoyed this episode. And if you did, do hit the like button down below. Oh, come on, people. There are nuggets still. There are still nuggets in the world. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you're brand new, consider subscribing. And I will see you dudes in the next episode.